What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Mike Check Podcast. This is T-Word, the People's Champ. Thanks for tapping in. Today, we're going to be talking about Floyd Schofield, a.k.a. Kid Austin, and his most recent fight on July 8th. Before we get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We're on to a new goal, looking to get some watch time from you guys. So if you don't mind, tap into some of those playlists we have created. Check out the Spence Crawford, the uh, football playlist, as well as the uh, boxing playlist. And you can see some of the content we put out over the last several months. But again, thank you for the support. Let's get into it. So Floyd Schofield had a fight on Saturday night. Um, he was elevated to the main event of the Golden Boy card that was on the zone um, because Virgil Ortiz and Imanta Stanionis were unable to get into the ring because Virgil got sick again. So they had to cancel their fight or postpone, whatever you want to call it. Um, so Schofield gets elevated. This is his second time headlining. He had a, I think, a Wednesday night card. He headlined for Golden Boy. So, um, this was just like another opportunity for him to try and look good in front of the masses. Um, I'm going to say that there's there's some significant flaws in his game that I don't know if it's, you know, training with his dad necessarily or if it's just that's just the limit on his skills. But there's some areas that he has to get better at. Uh, his footwork is, is pretty atrocious, to be honest. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't put himself in the prime position. He's got this jab. And I'm 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 sharing something that Boxing Gems, a channel that I follow, and I was on the live stream with him. Something specific he said that I also noticed. He called it a ballerina jab, meaning he's kind of teetering on his front foot when he throws the jab from either stance and it's leaving him open to get countered immediately because he's stuck. It's like picture yourself kind of lean forward on your tiptoe and extend your right or left arm on your front foot. And think about trying to get out of the way of a punch as you fully extend your arm. That's the position he's in on a regular basis, and that's getting him countered. So he's taking unnecessary shots from fighters that are, number one, typically smaller than him because they're bringing guys up to 35 to fight him, but then also guys who have a disadvantage in reach and height. So he's not even facing elite-level people, and they're getting these overhands on him as counters. And as he levels up in competition, that's going to become a punch that could get him knocked out. Um, I did notice that. I noticed that when he's stepping and he's switching stances in range, you know, within reach of his opponents, he's not even letting his hands go at that time to keep them from throwing punches while he's resetting his feet. I mean, you don't really want to throw off balance, but you don't want to just be shifting your feet with your hands down. And speaking of hands down, there's a there's a tick or habit that he has where when he's resetting, he brings his hands down to his waistline and he brushes his gloves off the front of his trunks. And this is an opportunity for a savvy fighter to put paws on him. And at some point, this is going to catch up with him if they don't fix it. And I don't know if this is something that his dad just refuses to address or if it's just something that he's addressing and Floyd Jr. is just not making the adjustment. Um, but these are things that, that are going to get him in trouble. I felt like his opponent, Haskell Rhodes, should have been knocked out um i thought that he was ready to go and there were opportunities but schofield doesn't cut off the ring very well and his opponents are able to have all these escape routes and these back ways out of the trouble instead of getting finished and then when he gets guys on the ropes um he kind of smothers his punches he overwhelms and he tries to just be imposing because he's physically bigger than everybody and it's just not working out um overall he got the victory um it was pretty lopsided uh, he did get cut at the end. Uh, at first, it looked like it was a punch that took him down. But in actuality, um, Haskell Rhodes kind of leaped in and he headbutted Floyd right on the cheekbone and it busted him open. And I mean, the gash was ridiculous, but it was so late in the fight, they let it go. And um, this was in like the 11th round, if I'm not mistaken. And then the 12th round, he just kind of just he didn't want no more smoke. He just kind of stayed out of the fire and just cruised to a victory. Um, so that's one round that you could give to his opponent. But I think it was a 10-round fight, so you could give his opponent maybe three, two to three out of 10. Uh, so it was an easy cruise control victory for Floyd. But lots of work to do, lots to um, lots to get going before he gets in there with a guy like Keyshawn Davis or start to look at your Tank Davis and your uh, Abdullah Mason to eat him for lunch, just to be honest. But want to give him credit for getting the victory. It takes bravery to get in the ring and be a fighter. So give him credit for the training and hard work he did to get there. Shout out to him for the victory. Until the next time, go ahead and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. This has been T-Word for the Mike Check Podcast. I'm out. Peace.